Good morning. On this Memorial Day Sunday, we are truly grateful for all who have served and sacrificed on our behalf. Today is Ascension Sunday in the church calendar, and we will journey into the first chapter of Acts, Christ rising into heaven after giving his disciples his final words on the earth with this promise that what goes up will come down. For now, let's prepare our hearts for worship with communion elements ready, a Bible, a candle if you would like. While you're on Facebook listening, go ahead and share and write a little comment in that share as you post it so others will also know to come. Come online and join in worship. Let's ready our hearts with some beautiful worship music this morning shared by Paul, our musical wonder, Paul Nelson. Thank you, Paul.
Welcome to worship at First Christian Church. We're glad that you have joined us from wherever you are. We find our lives here centered in Christ and formed in relationships. And we'd like for you to take a moment to gather up something that you can use during our time of communion to represent the bread and the cup. We would like for you to participate in communion with us if you would. We hope also that you'll stay with us at the end of our service for just a moment following our announcements uh, for something special. Normally on Memorial Day weekend, uh, at the very end of our service, traditionally we've had a flag folding ceremony, which is quite moving um, and appreciated. And this year we are not folding a flag here. We don't have those helpers to be with us, but we have had some of our family a church family share some of their family's folded flags and some of their pictures. So we hope that you'll stay with us following announcements for a short slideshow of those flags. We'll start by gathering with a wonderful old song, old fun contemporary song, Lord, I lift your name on high. Sing with us, please. Join me in praying, please. O oh, creator of every good and perfect gift, we come this morning to express our love and gratitude for your spirit, which is always with us. We lift our voices in song. We tune our ears to hear your voice through scripture and message and music. And we open our hearts to your grace. May we feel your presence and know that where you are, where we are, is holy space. Amen. Would you join me now in a responsive reading of remembrance? We remember that Memorial Day began when Confederate war widows decorated the far from home graves of Union soldiers. We remember and pray for those who grieve on all sides of a conflict. We remember that Memorial Day also began at Charleston's Washington race course when newly freed slaves honored prisoners of war. We remember and pray for people everywhere who are seeking freedom or living with the loss of freedom. We remember that May 30th was chosen for Memorial Day because it was one day that did not commemorate a battle. We remember and pray for a time when every day is an anniversary of peace. Let's sing our opening hymn, All Hail the Power 
of Jesus' name. Oh, children, we are singing about the Lord of all this morning. And today, Pastor Don will be teaching us from the book that comes right after the four books of the gospel writers. So you remember Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, X. That's the one we're on, X. I love coming to X because it makes me think all about that clapper that comes down and says action in the movies, you know? Well, chapter one of Acts is about the ascension of Christ. In fact, today is called Ascension Sunday. Ascension is just a big fancy word for taken up or lifted. Well, here in verse nine of chapter one, we get a picture of what an amazing sight Jesus' ascension must have been. It says here, as the disciples were looking on, Jesus was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. Now, I have, must admit, I have a hard time getting past this verse 9. I mean, I'm the daughter of a man who spent a lifetime looking up at the skies in wonder. Birds, planes, helicopters, anything that went up fascinated my daddy all his life long. He would have been amazed at this next, next picture. This is one of our own church members' pictures. A nurse in our church named Lisa Stewart took this picture as the blue angels flew over Arlington hospitals and even right over our own church two weeks ago, thanking our health care workers serving on the front lines like Mrs. Lisa has been doing these past weeks. Well, having served as an airplane mechanic in the Army Air Corps, my father loved looking up to sites like this. Two of his grandsons are currently serving as helicopter pilots in the Marine Corps and Navy. One flies the Huey helicopter, and the other flies this Osprey. Some parts of these helicopters were made at a place called Bell Helicopter right here in Arlington. This new one is named for the osprey bird, but as a machine, it is capable of flying both like a plane and a copter, yet it flies twice as fast as either. Now, how is that possible? How is that possible? Well, like the disciples described here in Acts, I get stuck in the point in scripture staring 
wondering, gazing off at Jesus. How is he doing that? Is, is he like a hummingbird? Is he like a helicopter? What's his body look like right now? So many questions come to mind in verse 9. But look here in verse 10 and 11. It says, And while they were gazing into heaven as Jesus went, two men stood beside them in white robes and said, Why do you stand looking in head to heaven? Jesus will come in the same way as you saw him go. I think this was those angels' way of saying that all the disciples wondering and staring would never get this mystery figured out. It was okay to stare for a while, but then it was time to get on with what they could do, what they could handle, like praying, figuring out their next best leaders, getting organized, going forth and serving. Well, this weekend is Memorial Day weekend. And we're celebrating this weekend as servicemen and women, that those that have come close but are know that they are not God. In fact, their greatest wisdom likely comes from figuring out that they'll never get things figured out. So many of them, like my own daddy, focused on what they could do on earth. Love family, love country, love God by serving all humankind and respecting God's magnificent creation. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, help us to look up to you every single day for as long as it takes to realize how awesome you are and how impossible it is for us to be you. Then help us to get to work here on earth, loving our family, our country, and above all, loving you and all of the creation that you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Carol. With that sense of wonder, let's turn together to the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, written by Luke, chapter 1. We'll hear together Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, 
together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. May God bless our hearing and wondering response to God's word this morning. Well, by the church calendar, today is Ascension Sunday, the annual celebration of Jesus rising up into heaven after he was raised from the dead, the Ascension of Christ. You ever notice how almost all of the big church words that we use to talk about Jesus Christ end with I-O-N? We believe in Christ's incarnation, His transfiguration, His crucifixion for our salvation, and His resurrection. But in Disciples of Christ churches, we rarely give attention to Jesus' ascension. Of the four gospel writers, only Luke mentions the ascension. (laughs) That one wasn't intentional. (laughs) Only Luke mentions the ascension, and he reports it twice. Luke's gospel ends like this. Then Jesus led his disciples out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, He withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven, and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. Thus endeth Luke. And then Luke begins his second volume, the Acts of the Apostles, right where his gospel left off with the risen Christ spending 40 days in with his apostles until the day he was taken up to heaven. Now, Acts chapter 1 is a packed passage. Christ has risen from the dead. He then spends 40 days with his hand-picked apostles, his disciples, instructing them for their new mission, but telling them to wait until they receive power from the Holy Spirit not many days from now. He was still talking with them about the kingdom of God. So his disciples asked him, so Lord, now, finally, will you lead us to overthrow Rome and restore Israel to its sovereignty? Jesus doesn't really answer that. But he says instead, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I like how the message paraphrases verse 7. He told them, you don't get to know the time. Timing is the Father's business. What you'll get is the Holy Spirit. So let's get what's happening here for these disciples in Acts chapter 1. Jesus, who was taken from them by crucifixion, has returned to them through resurrection Now he says that they are about to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. Catch that purpose. They will be empowered by the Holy Spirit so that they may be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. And then Jesus leaves them again. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. You know, that's that's a difficult scene for some people to swallow. Jesus is there talking to his disciples, and then suddenly he goes up, up, and away like Superman, as the musical score swells in the background. I don't 
think there's much point in trying to figure out if or how Jesus literally lifted off from the earth and then disappeared. I also don't have any trouble believing that it could have happened just as Luke says it did. I like believing in miracles. I like to believe that Jesus literally walked on water. He did not know where all the large rocks were. He walked on water. See, I've decided that I can't doesn't mean he couldn't. I can't doesn't mean he can't. I need miracles. We need miracles. I like believing in miracles. I believe that Jesus healed diseases, cured blindness, raised people from the dead, and was himself resurrected. And by the way, that is Jesus' resurrection body here in this story. A body that could suddenly appear inside of locked doors and yet say to Thomas, here, touch my wounds, feel. That body that could vanish from sight right after breaking bread with two of his disciples. The risen Christ ascended. I've decided that my best response to this story is, oh my God. Whatever Luke intended with these amazing words that he recorded, the meaning of the ascension lies in Jesus' promise that what goes up will come down. What goes up will come down. Jesus tells his disciples before he ascends, wait, receive power, be my witnesses. Walter Brueggemann writes, first, the church is instructed to wait. He doesn't say as much in Acts chapter 1, but that is made clear in that gospel Luke wrote. In Luke 24, you are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Wait. Brueggemann says the church is not to take its own initiative or to imagine we are left on our own. The church is to pause and linger in order to be led by the promise of the Father. Wait. Second, the purpose of the wait is to receive the gift of power. Christ promises you will receive power. Power when the Spirit comes upon you. The church's propulsion is not under its own steam. It is a gift. Here on the Mount of Olives with the disciples gathered around just in sight of Bethany. Jesus speaks to his disciples. It's like Jesus is saying, now I must leave you as a physical friend so that I can come to you as a personal power. We have work to do. We hear it back in John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But 
If I go, I will send him to you. What goes up will come down. Wait, wait to receive power from on high, from the Spirit. And third, says Brueggemann, the purpose of this divine empowerment given in a season of waiting is for us to be witnesses. To be witnesses. When the kingdom comes is not our concern. What we do until that time definitely is. We are to be Christ witnesses to the ends of the earth. Larry Patton writes, No longer would it be Jesus stretching out a hand to heal, speaking words of compassion, or challenging the powerless to confront the powerful. Instead, it would be earth found disciples, then and now, striving to follow in his steps, waiting, praying for empowerment to be his witnesses, bringing forth the kingdom of God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, until all is as God desires it to be. Wait. Receive power. Be my witnesses. That is what Jesus says. And then what does he do? <clears throat> he ascends. He ascends. The ascension of Christ concluded his ministry on earth. It also exalted him to the right hand of God. And that's an important part of the meaning of ascension. Luke says that a cloud hid him from their sight. Yeah, we know about clouds. In the Bible, clouds are associated with the nearness of God. Whether a cloud covering Moses on Mount Sinai or Jesus and his disciples at the transfiguration, through the clouds, Christ ascended to the glory of the right hand of God the Father, high and lifted up. As disciple scholar Lisa Davidson puts it, the ascension was Jesus starting to work from home. The ascension of Christ is affirmed in all of the historical ecumenical creeds of the church. We believe that Christ Jesus was crucified and buried and on the third day rose again. He ascended into heaven where he sits enthroned at God's right hand. While he was going, and while they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The two men in white were divine messengers, probably the same two who appeared to the women at the empty tomb on Easter Sunday in Luke's Gospel. They assured the disciples that Jesus would one day return just as they had seen him depart, <laughs> miraculously. In the meantime, church in our time, his disciples today wait and wait and pray together for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon Christ followers today to empower us anew to be Christ witnesses in all we do and say and post and share. Lead us now, our risen and ascended Christ. Your church awaits your new direction. All praise honor and faithful service 
be to our Lord Jesus Christ, who has ascended into glory. Amen. We'll respond with some new words to a tune that we know, O oh Christ, when you ascended. I do invite you today in your time of prayer to access the joys and concerns that are published in the newsletter and the friend each week as we gather the many joys and concerns uh, from around our brothers and sisters and incorporate them into ours. I do ask that you continue to join us. Let's pray together. Oh, holy, loving God, amazing creator of heaven and earth, creator of every one of us. O oh God, we turn our hearts to You. We continue to worship You, to be joined together in spirit from wherever we are, O oh God. O oh God, allow us to listen. Allow us, O oh God, as we gather in prayer to focus our thoughts on thankfulness. We are so thankful, O oh God, for so many that serve on our behalf in so many ways. And on this day, O oh God, we do turn our hearts towards thanks. We turn our hearts towards the sacrifice of those that have given all and traveled far from home, whether across towns and on our own shores or across the world, to seek freedom for others and freedom for us. Oh God, as we focus also on the freedom that you provide. Freedom in Christ Jesus. Your loving nature revealed to us. Your grace, although still us unable to wrap our minds around it, portrayed most clearly as your Son came and taught and welcomed and loved radically as put to death but raised and ascended. O oh God, in your strength, as we turn to you, as we turn to your Son, as we observe the Spirit weaving us together and moving in our midst, including at this time right now, allow us to be strong enough in you, O oh God, to acknowledge and then focus our steps. Allow us to acknowledge the times that we find ourselves looking up and allow us to focus our steps in that of your Son. Allow us, O oh God, to acknowledge anxiety and fear and instead of focusing our steps on shoring up positions or arguments, to turn to you and to turn to each other and to turn to how we can love like Jesus how we can welcome like Jesus, how we can reach out and do your work 
O God. Allow us to be vulnerable enough and strong in you to pause and to take time to mourn, O God. In this day of remembrance, in this season of so much grief, that in modern pace, in modern society, we seem to be drawn to just hurry through. Oh God, allow us to pause, to be honest in our relationships, to pay attention to those feelings, and to grieve. But allow us not to also stick there, oh God. Allow us to focus our steps to serve. Allow us to acknowledge our isolation But, O God, instead of getting angry or bitter, allow us to pick up the phone and to check on others that we know might be isolated and hurting. O God, it is good and it is right for us to pay attention to you and to see and gaze up, but don't let us stay there. Indeed, as we have been talking about this morning, O God, we ask that you empower us to focus our steps and to reach out, and to use that amazement and that wonder, that authenticity, as we acknowledge the feelings and the pains, the sacrifices, the sorrows, and the joys of all those places that meet in the middle that we don't know what to say, but, oh God, we know you are bigger than all of us. Allow us to follow your Son in those concrete footsteps that we know, in the ways we can spread the good news of Jesus Christ, your love, and your grace. It's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. As we personally personally navigate our place in this new normal, may we remember the good works of our church that continues daily. One of those is Gardens on the Go. Weekly, bags of food have been distributed to hundreds. Let us pray. Gracious God, let us remember that our small gifts multiply in your loving hands. It is in your Son's name that I pray. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Let's prepare our hearts now for communion by singing, I come with joy. I come with joy, a child of God, forgiven, loved, and free. I come with 
turn to the end of the passage we heard a few moments ago, after Jesus had ascended into heaven, Acts 1 verse 12 says, then they, the disciples, returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away, which by the way is just about a mile and a half. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Then Luke lists the 11 disciples of Jesus together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers, a group larger than the twelve, a group including women and men, a group gathered in the room upstairs. Nothing says specifically this was the upper room where Jesus shared his last supper with these same disciples. But I'm drawn to that specific modifier, the, the room, upstairs. Our faith requires belief, it requires devotion, it requires commitment, it requires longing to stay true when times are hard. You know, for my faith, it requires just feeling God's presence, knowing and feeling in my heart that Christ is near. We keep faith even when that feeling is not there, but oh, we long for that feeling to renew and restore our faith again and again. After Jesus had ascended one more time, taken away from these, his followers, what would they do? They return to Jerusalem as they were told. They go back to the upper room where they remember together the presence of Christ in their midst. And they do what Jesus promised would give to all of us that certainty, that feeling of Christ's presence with us. They go to the space where at the table Jesus took bread and broke it and gave it to them saying, take and eat all of you. This bread is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat this bread, remember me. And where he took a cup from the table and thanked God for it and gave it to them and said, take and drink all of you. This cup is my blood of a new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink this cup, remember me. When the risen Christ sat at table with the two disciples on their way to to Emmaus, and broke bread with them, and vanished from their sight. The first words to each other were, were not our hearts strangely warmed as he broke the bread? Were not those disciples in that upper room longing for that same warmth of heart to know that Christ would be with them, that what went up would come down, and the spirit that he promised would empower? Be empowered today, church as we take bread and cup. Here we know and remember and feel Christ our Lord with us, for we are guests at his table. Let us share. Heavenly Father, tomorrow we celebrate Memorial Day, recognizing those who died serving our country. We now break bread, symbolic of Jesus' broken body on the cross, who died serving us for the forgiveness of our sins. We are apart, but this table brings us together. We are broken, but Jesus' love makes us whole. Amen. God of love and hope, we worship virtually today, but are together in heart and spirit. We ask your blessing on the cup which represents the blood of Christ given for us. It also represents the grace which flows from your heart to ours, granting us forgiveness, redemption, and hope. We thank you, Lord, and ask you to lead and guide us
to do your work in this world. May we be as generous with all your children as you are with us. Amen. May the Spirit fill your heart as the risen and present Christ makes your place of communion an upper room and as we share together. Let us unite hearts in all the places we are and lift with one voice the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to lift as we pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to respond to God's moving in our midst, to the Spirit speaking to your heart, to the risen and exalted and ascended Christ who is with us, his church today to the call to be Christ witnesses in all we do and say and share. If you have not said yes to God's love for you in Jesus Christ, do so in these moments as we are singing and give us a call or a text. Let us know, message us on Facebook that you have chosen to walk in God's love in Christ. Or if you seek to understand more of what that is all about, put, put that in there. Give us your phone number. Give us a call at church. Let's talk and converse. We love nothing more than to share God's love in Christ. Let's sing together. We're glad you were worshiping with us today, and we hope that you will invite a friend next week and join us again. We do have a few um, announcements, and then remember our special slideshow following the announcements. Uh, once again, for the continued uh, safety and health of our members and our staff, the church building is closed until further notice. Uh, you can contact us, support staff or ministers. Uh, 
during office hours from 8.30 to 5, Monday through Thursday, or any time if there is an emergency. Please text or call or email us. We have prayer noon every day. If you'll stop wherever you are and say a prayer, we will be in prayer together. We continue our Bible studies for adults Tuesday evenings and Wednesday evenings at 7, and our children's gathering on Thursdays at 3.30. You can find the details and information for those in our friend or on our website. Now we have a special uh, announcement from Willie and Nancy. Hi, this is Willie and Nancy Redman. Hi. For a little over nine years, First Christian Church has had ministries to help put food on families' tables through the Community Garden, Harvesting Hope Community Garden, and through Gardens on the Go. And now we're excited to announce that we've been selected to be a distribution site for a new program called Farms to Families Box Program. This program is going to start next Saturday, May 30th. It's going to start at 10 a.m. and run until noon or until the supplies run out. Um, this, you're going to be able to get 18-pound boxes of fresh produce free. We ask that you come early. We ask that you stay in your vehicles. We will be wearing protective masks and, and gloves, and we will be loading your car or vehicle for you. This is a great opportunity to help put food on the tables of people that are food insecure at this time. We hope that you take advantage of this. We're at First Christian Church Arlington, 910 South Collins in Arlington, Texas. Please spread this uh, amongst your, the word amongst your family, your friends, and share us on social media, Facebook and Next Door Neighbor. This is an opportunity. We're going to be doing this at, at several churches in Arlington. So please get the word out. And if you know anybody that is in need of uh, food, this is a great opportunity, and we hope you take advantage of it. Have a great day and a great week, and we hope to see you next Saturday at Farmers to Family uh, Food Box Program. Thank you. God bless. And now we have a special announcement from Carol. Which is going on, and that is a wonderful invitation to be a part of. We want to make sure that we're reaching out to all the food insecure to be able to be here at 10 o'clock next Saturday. Then those of us who are food secure, if you will come back or um, come for the first time to church at 1 o'clock, we'd love to see a procession of cars lined up in the parking lot, safely spaced and able to go forth and celebrate our seniors who are graduating. I'd like to do something special for them. So whether it's a spirit stick that looks like flame for Pentecost or a sign that you can hold out the window and wave at them or a card you can drop in the bucket or goodies. I'm sure they'd appreciate those. Um, let's go out and celebrate our seniors in a senior celebration parade. Next Saturday, line up in the parking lot at 1 o'clock and we will go thank them for their hard work at a hard time. But they did it. Thank you all. Thank you, Carol. And now as we remember a few of our family members who served in the military, I hope that you'll lift up those and many others in your heart as well.
And now, children of God, you are named, you are known, created by the one most high, called by his son. Today we remember ascended. Let us reach out, let us care for one another, let us be hands and feet, serving to spread the good news and God's love and grace. Amen. Amen.